All right. I think we're live. Just going to check everything out here quickly. Oops. All right. Get started here in just a second. And got a new uh, camera set up, so bear with me here. Seems like the audio is working though. And let's just. All righty. Okay, I think we can uh, get started. So uh, be curious if uh, you have joined a live stream before. If this looks a little bit better, I think it's only uh, 720 uh, compared to 1080, but I think using the actual camera looks a little better. Audio should also be better. So hopefully uh, quality is, has improved. But anyway, let's get on with it. We are unboxing a new electric bike from a new company to me. This is the Hayoki. I'm assuming I, uh, maybe not pronouncing that 100% correctly, but this is the Antelope. Now they reached out to me and asked if I wanted to review one of their electric bikes. T took a look at the lineup and the reason I chose this one is it's more unique than their other models. This is a dual battery electric bike priced at $18.99. There'll be a link in the description if you are looking to purchase one, help support the channel. So thanks in advance for your support. There'll be other links in the description as well. Our uh, electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page where I track all the deals on the electric bike brands that we follow. And uh, that has been improved recently. So if you're looking to get a good deal, on an electric bike, be sure to check out that page. Uh, links within also uh, help support us. All right, one of the reasons I like to do the live unboxings is because I get a lot of questions from people, emails, YouTube comments, and it's very difficult for me to answer all the questions and I need to unbox uh, the bikes anyway. So great way to uh, do a live stream. You can ask anything about this electric bike. I'll do my best to answer. But if you have any other questions, uh, happy to answer them. Covered a lot of different topics um, in previous live streams, just random questions that people have. I'm actually going to cut the box. I don't necessarily recommend that you do that because if you perhaps need to return the bike, then you can't ship it back. But this is a heavy bike, uh, huge dual battery, large frame. Um, and so I don't want to lift it out of the box. So, all right. And it has been a while. Since I've done a live stream, we were getting some uh, nicer weather, went south for a little bit. And so we're back and I have three, four, five, five, actually more than that, uh, bikes and boxes. And so we'll have a lot of reviews. We'll do a lot of boxings. There's a wheel. And well, of course, uh, the weather is cooperating a little bit better. And actually, I might need to go get my scissors quick. Usually, I have side snips, which I highly recommend. Uh, you use for these, but we do not have them handy right now, so scissors will have to do. So we have the front wheel here. You'll notice that there are no spokes, so no need to worry about uh, these wheels coming out of true. So that's uh, something that's pretty unique. It adds weight, um, but pros and cons, I guess. This bike does come with front and rear fenders, aluminum or metal fenders at least. All right. So yeah, some cool looking wheels here. 
let's see what else we have. I should start with uh, C, one battery. I, or maybe they're both down here. Interesting. Usually the batteries are actually installed uh, on the bike. Uh, how much does it weigh? A uh, good question. I can't remember on the website. Maybe it didn't say. I, I'm going to guess 75 plus pounds would be my guess. Alrighty. If someone wants to go into the website and see if it shows it there. Otherwise, I will have that in my full review, of course. I have to try to weigh the bikes. All right, so we have the charger. Let's see, is this a three amp charger? I think it is. Nope, just a two amp charger. So uh, the battery capacity on this is 26 amp hours. So that's about double the average. I, I think average battery capacity is right around 14 or so. At least that's what I view it as. Metal Welgo pedals, the pedals that I've seen many, many times. We have a cheap pump. Uh, unfortunately, this is probably just going to go in the trash. Don't recommend uh, using this. It's just cheap. Well, unfortunate that they include that. 84 pounds, Peter says. Thank you, Peter. Front light. All right, and some tools. I'll probably use most of my own tools. And uh, yeah. hopefully these uh, wrenches fit this size. I actually don't have my wrenches handy at the moment. All right, and this is the uh, gray version. Or silver, I guess. Let's, this is kind of crazy if this has both batteries both batteries just in here yep they're both in here so this is actually the first electric bike as far as I'm aware, that I've that I'll have reviewed with two batteries. There's definitely a I won't say a ton of dual battery bikes, but there's plenty out there. All right, and we have keys. Okay, so this is the battery that'll go underneath the down tube here. Got a couple scratches on the frame, it looks like. All right, this is a 48 volt 12 amp hour, so that's on the bottom. And then there's a 48 volt. 13 amp hour. So that's the uh, battery capacities. So I guess it's 25 amp hours, not 26 like they say on their website. At least I'm pretty sure it said 26 on their website. And then this is obviously the, uh, like a shark style goes behind the seat tube. Uh, so we'll get those installed. I'm gonna wait. And then it looks like uh, two different sets of keys, so you will have to make sure you have the correct set of keys, um, depending on which battery. Some of this packaging off, let's see. What, what bike carrier do you recommend for e-bikes over 65 pounds? Do any bike carriers with ramp? Yes, okay. Uh, Beverly, thanks for your question. Uh, if you look back on the videos I've done, I highly recommend the One Up USA um, bike rack. They're super duty. Uh, it's 75 pounds per tray and 225 pounds uh, total capacity. And while I haven't tested them uh, myself, they do have. Um, like a ramp, and so you can load your bike up that way. So that is 
the one I'd recommend. I just got back from uh, Florida, 18 hour drive, used it, no problem. Super easy, uh, especially when you have it, once you have it kind of dialed in for your electric bike. It is on the pricey side, but it is, you know, built in the United States, very high quality, uh, great company in my experience. And uh, yeah, it's a great product. And, you know, as you've kind of alluded to in your question, there aren't a lot of bike racks that go over 65 pounds, which is why, um, you know, I wanted to review that rack um, so much. So, and let's see. Yeah, that's the one I would recommend. The other thing to keep in mind is if you do like 65 pounds is definitely on the higher end of some electric bikes. But if you remove the battery, usually you're removing, you know, five pounds. So if you have, say you have a 70 pound bike and you have a five pound battery, potentially you can get into, um, you know, the, the weight rating on a different rack. Um, the other one that I will say that I've used a fair bit is the Hollywood rack. But the problem with that one is you're not going to get any assistance to, uh, um, to lift it up. And uh, I think, so I believe it's the Saris rack um, that has a hydraulic lift on it. I mean, that's when you're getting really up there in the price range, but um, that's one we might be able to review. They actually reached out, so we'll see, but. Just trying to get these zip ties on. And one of the, you know, one of the concerns with that one up rack um, that people have is if it works with bikes with fenders. Now it will depend on the bike, but uh, I took a uh, Rad Power Bikes Rad Mini down to Florida. And what I did is I just unscrewed the two bolts that put the fender and then rested the fender next to the tire. And that worked out really well. So there are ways to kind of work around those racks that clamp to the tires. So we've got handlebars here. Actually, this stands okay. Yeah, I might just do the handlebars quick. Good question though. Okay, so let's see, we have, it's kind of looking, looks like a monochrome display. I'm gonna get out my Topic tool. It's a ratchet wrench that I use in most of my assembly videos and it just makes doing this a lot faster. You can see there's a giant, you know, the, the handlebars are definitely, you know, normally they'd be down here. So you got a lot of spacers here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spacers to raise those handlebars up. Looks like they have some mounts here on the front of the head tube. I don't, they, I assume they sell, they must sell a front rack. They look really closely spaced together though. And actually, I think I have this fork. I have to turn the fork around. Notice the brakes on the wrong side. Should mention that I am not a professional mechanic, so this is not a tutorial. If you want to watch a professional mechanic, check out some of our uh, other videos uh, with uh, Matt from All About Bikes. All right, so I guess I have to loosen this up and spin it unless it's, let's see. Unless it's already loose, I don't think so. No, I think I'm gonna have to loosen this up a little bit. Looks like we need uh, 
So this is just spun uh, for packaging, it looks like. Should be able to, there we go. And I'm just, I'm definitely gonna have to adjust this again when I get the wheel on. It'll just help me make sure it's straight. But for now, I'll just tighten it down loosely here. What is the weight limit? Oh gosh, I think it said, I think it was something crazy like 350 pounds. I can look at it. I can't remember. I've been actually looking at uh, the weight limits of um, a few electric bikes because I've been getting some questions from people looking for bikes that have a high weight capacity. And so I think this was three... 325, 350 pounds payload capacity. There you go. All right, so I'm just trying to, see. we gotta spin these around. I don't like that. There we go. Shimano thumb shifter. So definitely using some more name brand components. Sometimes it's tricky with these uh, center mounted LCD displays to get these uh, screws in. We'll see how it goes here. Sometimes you can turn them out of the way. I do need the smaller size. I'll check the comments in just a second once I get this started. So yeah, I also have uh, the Cyrusher Komoda. I think that's how you pronounce it. That's going to be a fun one-ton box. And we've got the, um, let's see, the Ride One Up um, Cafe Cruiser. That'll be a really good review. I'm really looking forward to that one. Really like Ride One Up's electric bikes. Uh, what else do we have? We have the KBL Ranger. That's going to be here soon, this week. And there's a couple electric bikes that are going to be launching in the next uh, few weeks that I'm pretty excited about that I can't share with you just yet, but we'll be hopefully doing some videos on those. And uh, yeah, it seems like there's a lot of companies announcing new models, uh, some of the bigger names, so. So we can turn these over, there we go. All right. Oh yeah, JT is, uh, giving you some other thoughts on the one up or other information. And uh, looks like the weather's gonna warm up here. So hopefully next week I'll be able to do some riding and get some reviews out. We have, I think one in the works that's already been filmed and then it'll start getting crazy with all these electric bikes, I think. It's up to like 13 or 14 reviews or something that uh, are currently in, in queue. So we need some nice weather and uh, we'll get those out. Obviously had really nice weather in Florida. Kind of hard to beat as far as riding. Just some great trails down there too. Got to go out a fair bit of times. Did the Rad Mini review when I was down there. Oh, and I also have the uh, GT Grade uh, Current. That's a gravel electric bike. That review will be coming out soon. It's 90% filmed and 70% edited, maybe. Something like that. I think I need the extender. 
So just imagine how much longer this would take me if I was using the Allen keys that they said. And this is just much faster. And I'll just put these in because I'm going to probably need to do some adjustments. Looks like unbranded brakes. We do have a, a bell that has been bent into the, or just moved into the brake levers here. Okay, good enough for now. We'll come back to that. All right, maybe what I'll do is, uh, should I do the front light? Maybe I'll do the front light and fender. Looks like there's no bolt on this, so I'm guessing, or rear bolt on this, so I'm guessing it just goes through the light and then goes through the fender. So I'd be curious for those, uh, Watching, is it nice in your area? Are you getting out on an electric bike? Are you looking at purchasing one? It's been some really good deals uh, lately, I feel like. Red Power Bikes has a sale that ends today. Um, and yeah, I feel like maybe the supply chain issues won't be as bad, but maybe it's just going to get crazier as uh, spring gets started. I always tell people, at least the last couple of years, if you want an electric bike, you really should uh, think about uh, ordering early because you never know if the model that you want is going to be suddenly out of stock and then delayed and it's really hard for companies to give uh, estimates. So especially with uh, gas prices increasing, I think electric bikes are definitely going to be more popular. Great for commuting. We'll get this light on here. Oops. The right size. So I like the metal fenders, um, except sometimes in the rear they can kind of vibrate with the motor. Speaking of motor, this is a 500 watt motor. Not sure if it peaks higher than that, but on their website they say 500 watts. So we'll obviously test that out. Looks like I got to tighten up the lights. So stays put a little bit. Right. And we also have the uh, custom electric bike company, electric bike coming, that we uh, picked out some custom colors. So I'll be sharing that. Okay, I think uh, I'm going to get this wheel here. So we'll bolt on. Not a quick release. Hopefully one of these is the right size. Looks like it's a 15. Hundred sixty millimeter rotors here. There we go. Kind of see where this. I assume those go on the inside, but one thing to keep in mind is. With these ones that bolt on, you know, it's just, uh, if you do happen to get a flat, it's just going to be a little bit more difficult to fix it while you're out on the road. And so 
if you're in an area where you have goat heads and things like that, definitely check out the uh, Tannis tire liners and uh, maybe some sealant as well because it's going to be pretty annoying to have to change a flat. So, alrighty. So, I thought they listed Tetro brakes, but on the bike, it looks like they are unbranded, but they look very much like the Tetro brakes. So that's something to keep in mind, but I'll have to look back at the specs. I do like that this is a step through, that's nice. All right. Um, and as loose as they go. Let's see how this goes. Oops. I might be regretting putting it on the uh, the fender here. We'll see. It does look, there is a uh, spacer in this one, which usually they don't have these spacers. There's a spacer. Usually they don't have spacers, which is why I didn't check. But those are to uh, prevent you from hitting the, uh, if you hit the front brake, it's not a, not a big deal. Get this fork to sit nicely in here. This uh, this part is usually easier when if you have two people or a bike stand. There we go. All right. Now I just gotta screw these on. And I now know why they give you two of these wrenches. Let's go ahead and maybe hit the kickstand here. Alrighty, that'll make it a little bit easier. It's probably the trickiest part of the assembly is just getting that front wheel on. Definitely want to make sure you get these on plenty tight. So overall, I think it's a pretty cool looking bike. I'm gonna definitely come back and tighten these down with uh, a better uh, wrench. All right, uh, let's see, what do, we, what do we wanna do next? Maybe let's do the uh, pedals. I'll check your comments here. Tektro Aries discs, but not actual calipers or levers. Interesting, okay, so they actually call out that they're Rotors are Tektro, which I don't necessarily see the Tektro branding, but I could be could be wrong. Uh, the pedals are labeled with stickers. That's always helpful, left and right. Right one's going to be threaded on uh, normally, so righty-tighty. And if you can see down by the cranks here, it almost looks like a mid-drive 
uh, motor here, but I'm assuming all the electronics are, actually, I'm very certain that all the electronics are hidden in there. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is, if you can see the, uh, it's a little bit hard to tell with the kickstand, but the kickstand is not located towards the rear, which means that it will come in contact with the pedals if you're moving in around your garage. It's not a deal breaker, just uh, maybe because of how heavy this bike is, um, or maybe with the dual batteries, it's just not quite as stable, but uh, that's something that we've seen most companies move towards at this point. So get these pedal, well go pedals on. And you do get a rear rack, that's nice. So, and uh, you know, as I said, this is a, a newer company, at least as far as I'm aware. Yeah, these wrenches are definitely uh, not the greatest. And we do have a Shimano Turney rear derailleur, seven speeds, yep. So, I, I mean, in my opinion, if you're looking at the price of this electric bike, I feel like you're not going to find a whole lot at $1,900 that has 26 amp hours of battery capacity. Okay, let's see. Can uh, maybe put the batteries on at this point. I do wish they had the same keys because it's just uh, a little tricky to uh, keep track. All right, and I guess you can go in from the side. Might need to lift the seat up just a little bit. Oops. Let's see. I'll try that again. Tighten this quick release up a little bit. There you go. Should stay. Oh. The uh, little screw where you tighten this is like right next to the. Uh, the plate for the uh, battery. So it's just tricky to actually get in there. All right. Let's see, I'm guessing maybe these keys. Okay, there we go. One battery in. Did you do any videos in Florida? Uh, yeah, so I did the, it was a little bit tricky, so. What I wanted to do is I wanted to bring down a new electric bike uh, like the Snap Cycle and um, and do a review a, a review on a new electric bike that I haven't you know reviewed and or even ridden. And the problem was the rack on the Snap Cycle was too wide that we couldn't get our child seat on it. So our son came with us and we're going to do riding with him. So unfortunately that bike wasn't going to work. And the, let's see, the Rattan bike has the seat on the back, like for an actual passenger, I guess, not a, not for a child. So that one wouldn't work. And those were the, kind of the two, and I was specifically looking to bring a folding electric bike. So what I ended up doing was bringing the Rad Mini. So I did the Rad Mini review while we were down in Florida. And it's not technically made for the Thule Up Maxi child seat, um, but it, does work. Rad just doesn't recommend it. I would not, I would not, uh, I would not buy that bike uh, for the purpose of using it with a child seat. So um, yeah, but we were able to get that review done. And then we did do the review on the new GT bike down there. So that'll be coming out uh, as well. Let's get this battery in here. Head it the right way. Oh, 
think I would need to put the key in. Let's see. Oh, I think it was actually locked. There we go. And then it, there's a definite click in there. And to release it, you push this lever here. And definitely want to make sure you turn this, lock it. And I always really tug these, especially with the batteries in the bottom of the down tube to make sure that battery's not gonna fall out. All right, so both of the batteries are in. How do the welds look? Look huge in this video. Um, they look average, average size. I don't know, um, maybe a little bit bigger, but um, I mean, you're obviously like down here on the bike, you have all these kind of welds coming together, but um, I'm not a, uh, an expert when it comes to welds. They're not smooth or anything, um, but I would say it's, they, it, if you wouldn't have said anything, I wouldn't have thought anything um, about them, but. All right, let's see. Um, can get that fender attached. And then I'll try to turn it on. And again, if you're just joining me, I've seen a, a lot of people join. So if you have any questions about not only this electric bike, I mean, I'm obviously just unboxing it, but if you have any questions about other electric bikes, I'm happy to, uh, to chat. I did see uh, a fair bit of uh, electric bikes down in Florida. All right. Well, there's this brake cable right there. I'll push that out of the way. other one first just to... so these are uh, Chow Yang 20 by 4 inch tires and move the bike back a little bit Trying to see what else. It almost looks like, uh, I guess I missed this box. So they must have, with the two, mo or two batteries rather, which makes sense. So with, with the two batteries, they give you two chargers. So you can charge them both up at the same time, I guess, which is nice. There we go, I got that one started. There is a, uh, looks like a lockout, but just looks, Yeah, this, uh, we'll, I'll try to push on the uh, handlebars maybe and see if I can feel how the suspension feels. Looks like a pretty entry level front suspension in my opinion. Oh, it almost looks like, that's why I was having issues with this. Uh, looks like the fender Got a little bit bent in shipping. Try to bend that back a little bit. That's why. Alrighty. 
All right, and then we have the light cable here coming out of the other side. Plug that in. There we go. All right, let's see. You ever get your Hemiway battery playoffs? And if so, what was the turnaround time? Okay, so the Hemiway. Uh, that's an interesting story. So the battery were uh, the batteries were on back order. So it took um I want to say a month, probably more, to get me the the ba replacement battery. And then what I noticed when I kind of finished putting the bike together is that it appears that the mounts for where the rear rack attaches on the Hemiway they're welded in properly. So when you attach the rear rack, it's leaning towards one side. Basically one side of the rack is hitting the fenders. I've gone back and forth with them. I think I just need to send them a video. They're not quite understanding the issue. I've sent a few pictures. Um, and so that's where we're at with the Hemiway. And obviously I was gone. So uh, I didn't really make a lot of progress on it. So the problem is like the rear light is meant to go on the rear rack. And so in order to do my review, I really want the bike to kind of be how it should for anyone else who's looking at purchasing it. So that's where we are on the Himaway, but they did send me a new battery, which was nice. And um, just haven't been able to ride it. And it's really been, you know, the it's, it's pretty tough to do uh, reviews here in winter in Wisconsin, just brutal to go, you know, 20 miles an hour uh, and, and have the, uh, the wind chill you know, in the single digits or even lower than that. Looks drop shipped. Um, I am not sure if this brand like drop ships these. I assume that these were um, their own, but they could not be, I guess. So I need to tighten up the handlebars, but that front suspension I felt better for sure. I think that's a pretty entry level uh, suspension. And actually, maybe I'll, uh, since I'm here, let's straighten these handlebars out. Might actually be pretty good. Might bend them just a bit here. We are almost ready to turn this bike on. The brake levers feel pretty good even though they're uh, unbranded. I always like to see Shimano components. I guess they have a Shimano shifter on here, so that's good, but um, I would have liked to see the actual Tektro Aries brakes. There's that bell actually working now. All right, and then I'm just gonna get a feel for these handlebars here. That actually feels pretty good. Go ahead and tighten those up. And And then we'll turn it on. So as far as components, I, mean, I feel like these are some of the similar components that you find at this price range, um, especially with the Shimano shifter and derailleur, Shimano tourney. More entry level components, but The cable management up here looks like they 
have some Velcro wraps. Doesn't look too bad, could be seen worse. All right. Stand over heights, pretty low, very easy to hop on. And I'll go ahead and. All right. Okay, I'll hit the power button here. All right. Guessing you need to, yeah, you need to be in a pedal assist level. Looks like I need to change it from kilometers to miles per hour. Has a temperature on it. That's something that's uh, unique and uh, shows wattage and uh, yeah, basic LCD to screen, but um, yeah, it gets the gets the job done. Let me look to see if there's anything else on the other side of the bike. Could uh, hit the throttle here a little bit actually. Right hand twist grip throttle. And it sounds like the pedal assist coincide with the uh, how much throttle you get. Yeah, big deal. Oh, and we do have, I guess I didn't turn on the front light here. Usually it's the front two buttons. Pedal, or the pedal assist and the, let's see. There we go, front light and rear light. Yeah, not actuated by the brake levers, but is integrated. And uh, yeah, rear rack has a big window on it. That's not something I've seen before. Looking to see where the motor cable comes in on the other side here. Yeah, good deal. All right, let's see. I'm going to check the comments here. They don't list the standover height on the website. Very important for step through bikes. Totally agree. Uh, this one, I mean, I don't know, what is that? Maybe 20 inches or somewhere around there um, would be my guess. Are the batteries branded? Um, I mean, they're branded for Hioki, their brand. Uh, I can look to see. Usually you don't get a ton of information from the batteries, but now that I have to see. All right, battery says, has serial number, capacity. That's, that's pretty much it. I have seen, I mean, these cases are these, is this a reentrant case? I have seen very similar batteries, I want to say. Uh, maybe on the Aerial Rider Rideal. This, this logo just looks very familiar. It says HL down tube tight, um, but it looks very similar um, as far as the battery goes. Put that back on, and I'll have to look at the uh, manual and see how to change the miles per hour. But I will give it one more minute in case you have any other questions. I will say I did the e-bike assembly song and dance a few days ago on my first e-bike and loved riding it. Your review helped me pull the trigger on Mac Wheel Mac Mission 100. Yeah, I actually did that. Uh, video quite a while ago and I think they are offering it for uh, maybe uh, you want to share what you paid for I want to say they were, had it for five something uh, I actually saw a good bit of uh, increased traffic they must have had a big sale on the bike and people were searching for reviews and it is a very basic electric bike but for the price it's actually pretty decent I mean there's no doubt Entry level components. I mean, that's a five, six hundred, seven hundred dollar electric bike. So, um, yeah. Glad. Uh, hope you hope you're happy with it and you enjoy it. Do the batteries work in tandem or does one take over? 
when one is depleted? Good question, Peter. I'm not sure. My assumption was that it's going to pull from both of them. Um, not 100% sure. Let's see here. Yeah, so $540 on Woot. Had to change the saddle and put a rack on it. That's such a good deal for that bike. And that's actually fairly, I mean, the motor is definitely one of the highlights and the battery capacity is actually pretty decent. Some of the other components like the, like the, the cranks are more entry level. At least that's what I noticed. Um, I did after doing my review, I did have to tighten down uh, the crank. So just be aware of that. I'm just looking to see if they have any display. They actually have decent instructions. Some of these are. Um, Usually not very helpful, but they even give torque values in here. Um, just looking to see max speed, environment, Fahrenheit, which is funny because need to change it. So yeah, it looks like I might have to, oh, here we go. All their stuff is in, should be in advanced settings. Anyway, I'll figure it out for the uh, the review. Had to change. All right. All right. Cool. Well, I think that's it. If anyone has anything else, you can put it in quickly. Otherwise, thanks for joining me. Again, links to this electric bike and some of our resources in the description below. Again, um, you know, I know it's assembling an electric bike. It's not super exciting, um, but it's great to uh, chat with some familiar names and new names and, and talk electric bikes. So if you do have a question or um, come up with any other questions, we'll be doing live unboxings, uh, definitely a handful of them over the next couple of weeks so we can have these bikes assembled and ready to go for our reviews. All right. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.